scratches. A lot of you, hopefully, have been practicing the baby scratch, right? Just, just to queue up songs. Uh, that was something that we talked about three weeks ago. The only difference between a scratch and you know, a queuing rub is that you're letting the audience hear it, right? So that's the most basic scratch that hopefully everyone can master by the end of the semester. That, and, and it's, even though it's basic, it's at least 50% of any scratch routine that you hear is, is a baby in there somewhere. It's a baby in between other scratches. The baby scratch is just so practical. It's the foundation, the building blocks of everything. It's like, it's like having a baseline in your song. A forward is just letting the record go. Um, but being able to bring it back silently after playing it out. So this is, this is a forward. These are all forwards. One thing that you might notice is that my hand is actually following the record as it spins. So that I can sort of go by muscle memory that it always comes back to 9 o'clock. I'll play that again. And the important thing is not to hear the rewind. You don't want to hear this. You want to use the crossfader to to turn off the sound when you're going backwards. So that's a baby together with a forward. My hands are going forward, so it might look like I'm pushing. I'm just letting go. I'm just releasing it. I mean, I guess. This is a basic scratch, you know? If I want to do a baby scratch, typically the forward ends a scratch sentence. If you're doing like, you know, a performance or you're sort of like actually just adding scratches on top of a beat. It's like the full stop at the end of a sentence. So typically, all scratch routines will end with that. Not always, but sometimes. And you can do forwards with any of these sounds. Forwards and babies. That's all it is, forwards and babies, all right? Um, so those are like the ones that I absolutely want you to practice. Get at least that far. I am going to show you the rest of them. The rest of them are just for the people who really want to learn how to scratch. All right, you know, um, these are other fun things to be able to do. I've only been using the crossfader to turn off the rewind sound this entire time. You know, every time I do a forward, I close the, I, I close the crossfader so that you don't hear it. So when I bring it back, you don't hear the zwip sound. All right. So the push, my hand remains on the record, and I'm actually going faster than the record would normally travel if I were to release it. All right. Oh, let me try. Push. So that's a push, it's just slightly faster. A drag is exactly the same thing, only slightly slower. Um, it, will ten, it will take more time, basically.
doesn't sound very interesting, but you can use it instead of a forward to end a scratch sentence. So So it sounds a little bit different, just varying it. But it's also a foundational movement for some of the other scratches later on. All right? So the next one is a stab, which is basically a push, but you are very much trying to capture that acceleration and deceleration sound at the beginning and the end of the push. Um, so it's a little bit more aggressive. And you, as a result of it, you can actually go a little faster. Again, you don't hear the rewind. You get a lot of control over this. But your crossfader has to move so fast in order to be able to do this that I actually need to bounce it. I'm using my thumb as a kind of a spring. If I was on this side, then it will be... My thumb is always pushing out gently, and my index finger is always pushing in firmly. You can use your third finger, you can use your second finger, you can use both, you can use your whole hand, but I like using my index finger. At this point, it starts to feel a bit like drumming because you're kind of tapping every time you make a sound, but you have to coordinate your hands so they're both kind of moving at the same time. Unlike a lot of the other uh, scratches further down the list, though, they're moving pretty much at the same time. So every time I go forward on the record, I'm also pushing in with the uh, crossfader. So it's very easy to synchronize. You are kind of like both hands do move at the same time. That's one step. Let's, let's hear it with a different sound. Next, I said that drags are useful. Again, a drag, right? What if I were to do that drumming motion while dragging, right? That's called a transform. So the reason why it's called a transform is, you know, I went and watched the old Transformers, okay, especially like the 80s shows, they had the sound effect that was like Autobots transform and roll out, right? That's why they call it a transformer. On your effects channel, in your controllers, you have a trance effect. That's what this means. It's a transform effect, basically, but they shorten it to trance just to be able to fit it in as few characters as possible. Um, very popular among Philadelphia DJs, DJ Cash Money, Jazzy Jeff. This one really feels like drumming because this hand can sort of like do anything. If you move it faster, you get a higher pitch. If you move it slower, you get a lower pitch. You use your crossfader hand, whether you're doing on this side or you're doing it on this side. You use your crossfader hand to tap out the rhythm you want. So that's the transform. Right? And then, of course, you can combine it with the other scratches. So that's just all the scratches I did earlier, just, just sort of put together. I haven't planned any of those scratches. This is all like, this is what I feel like doing right now. And um, when you get comfortable enough, it's kind of like you're just speaking. Unlike rap, you don't have to have to think about what words you're going to use. You've got your words, it's ah and fresh. You know, that's all, those are all the words you're using, you're just thinking about the rhythm of it, right? The next one is a tear, which theoretically is simpler because you only need one hand on the platter and your crossfader is just open. 
But what you're trying to do is you're trying to break up the sound by moving your hand abruptly. So that's a tear. Um, it can be combined with others. The idea of the tear is that you're using just one hand on the platter to be able to get different sounds out. The last one I want to leave you with, which is, I'm going to admit, a scratch that I've been struggling with for years, uh, which is the chirp. It's actually a fundamental scratch. It's not meant to be a difficult scratch. The problem it doesn't start with the fader off. It starts with the fader on or open. So you're hearing the sound. Baby scratch, right? So when I'm going forward, I close it. So you, instead of the full sound, you hear kind of half of the sound. And then when I'm going backward, I open it. So again, you hear half the sound. And you end up with a much more uh, percussive sound. You can take almost any kind of sound, like fresh. It had a slow attack, right? But if I chirp it, and the goal is to try to get up to that faster speed. The problem is if you don't have your hands in the correct sequence, you end up closing the fader before you hear that first sound, or you end up opening the fader too slow so you don't hear that second sound. So it's like you're coordinating both at the same time, and I have trouble with it. There's a slight delay. You're lagging a little bit. Because if you don't lag it, and you do it precisely, you lose one of the sounds. I wanted you to be able to know that's a chirp, and I wanted you to also know that that's actually really difficult because I have so much trouble with it. Again, doing that delay, right? What I found sometimes it helps is that instead of doing it very close to the edge of the crossfader, giving yourself more space. So instead of coming over and just moving it a few millimeters, I move it a few centimeters at least. And that slows me down a little bit so I can get a little bit more of that sound out. There are other scratches on top of that, of course. And if you watch the video that I had, uh, for this week, Shortcut, who is super clean and a master at all of this, he shows 15 levels of turntable scratching. I know he's got more levels beyond that. Um, and if you actually watch him perform, it's like he's doing things that are not in that video. But the first seven levels include everything I just showed you. All right? You're free to practice any of these, of course, and more if you want. Uh, but I would like everyone to at least get used to baby scratches and forwards. After all, a forward is just, it's just a drop, right? You're just dropping a record, only you're bringing it back at the end of the record. And a baby is just cueing. Only you're letting people hear it, so you have to do it in time with the music. So those are the, like, the two basic things I would like you to try to get comfortable with that. I will put uh, some files up, uh, so I'll put up one of these beats. I will put up uh, um, the scratch sounds and the good time sound. Do you have preference of which kind of scratches? Yes, but it's a dumb reason. It's just because I started there and I got most of my practice there. So when I came over here, I have found that there are some scratches that I'm, that I'm better at with my right hand, um, even though I practice with my left. So for instance, if I'm baby scratching, I can't actually do that with my left hand. And that's called a scribble. I can do it, but I don't know how to use it musically yet. There are some scratches that are just going to be easier on one hand or the other. Try it both ways and see what's easier. You know, don't make it hard on yourself. You can eventually start to say, all right, I've mastered it on one hand. I know what it's supposed to sound like. I'm going to try the other hand and see if I can get it going as well. Can you do all of this on a digital device? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, you don't have that momentum underneath you, but as long as it can detect your hand on the platter, if you turn on vinyl mode, you'll be fine.